So this video is going to focus on, on proper methods of cleaning up plaster. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix a quick batch. I'm just going to do a very quick batch. We have a couple alginate molds here. Um, so I'm just going to quickly mix it. So this is also a refresher for how to mix plaster. You're noticing I'm creating islands. And as I go down, I'm circling it around. The island is still sticking there. I'm going all the way around. My island is now almost not a false island. Notice that it's still going in. We're getting to the point where it's going to be plenty thick. I'm going to add just a little bit more. And this is just pottery plaster number one. It's what this kind of plaster is called. This is the least expensive of our kind of plasters that we have. Also not the strongest, but plenty, plenty perfect. Um, and if you're using clay, if your end result is to make a clay mold, this is your number one best. Okay, so I now have it. The island is still sitting there on the surface. Everything has slaked in. So now I quickly mix it. So notice, here's the beginning of the cleaning, is right after I mix it, I'm gonna take my hands, I'm gonna dip it in some water. We're gonna bring that mixing part to over in a second. I now just quickly, for casting, anything I cast, I bounce. Get all the bubbles out. Okay, so now I have a couple molds right here. These are molds of um, casts of amber and alginate. Not amber, what's the correct? Pitch. Pitch. So I just overfilled that one. I overfilled that one. I overfilled that one. And I've now overfilled that one too. So now with some excess, which I've made way too much plaster. Um, so we need to, every time you mix plaster, you should always have some extra something you're gonna do. Um, so we just have one little thing. So we'll throw some burlap in there. We'll throw some burlap. You know what? We're going to make this a little bit of a burlap, how to construct burlap video as well here. So I'm now going to get my burlap in the plaster. I'm going to remove my excess. And then I'm going to construct with burlap for a moment here. So this is if you have not done this yet. This is just a little refresher on how to do this. What was your suggestion? Oh, thank you, thank you. So, da, 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 da. okay, and we'll take our last little bit and we'll pour it over here to make that first burlap, make sure we get it in. So, now using your fingers almost like a spatula. Hopefully you can see that in one of our camera angles. Try to remove all your plaster. Okay, so now I'm gonna drag this over here. Drag this over here. Okay, so now I'm going to grab our bucket. First, I'm going to mix my hands so I don't get plaster on the bucket. I'm now taking this over here. Uh, I'm going to put this on top. So, anytime you're using plaster, you want to kind of consistently rinse your hands. And so, for COVID, in non COVID times, we generally have a, a 55 gallon bucket, uh, like a trash can, 30 or 50, and we have it and, and with a little bit of bleach. Um, just a, a teeny bit to kill any bacteria that students can share um, as a mixing. But right now, I highly recommend um, each of you who are working with plaster, we have about 30 of these basins that we've been collecting over the last six months. 
um, and is to kind of claim one for for the duration of your project, if it's an afternoon or maybe for a week or three weeks or whatever it might be. And you wanna give your, your piece a cleaning immediately after using it. And so now, now here's the thing is that this bucket we've been using for the demos and you can see it's cloudy and I don't think you saw it right before, but it's, it already had some plaster that had sunk to the bottom. So we're gonna pause this recording in a second and we're gonna go over to what this is gonna look like tomorrow because you at this point do not pour this down the sink. This is how sinks get ruined. Um, you can even start to see very slowly that there's some settling that's happening right now. Um, and uh, okay. I just, one more detail is that sometimes is as you're working with plaster, your fingertips, your fingernails will get, start getting plaster in them. The way that to get that plaster out so it doesn't collect in your fingernails and crevices is to consistently be rinsing your hands throughout the afternoon while you're working in the morning or the evening, whatever it is. Um, but do know that if you are gonna be working with plaster, I do recommend um, rubbing some Vaseline or some hand lotion or something like that to help prevent um, too much buildup and then to consistently be washing uh, with soap and water that little bit of residue um, out while you're working. It really helps. You do not need to wear gloves while you're working with just regular pottery plaster, but any of the technical plasters, I do recommend gloves. Okay, so I think I'm going to pause it and we're going to show you some examples. So out here, we have some examples of some plaster buckets from over the past few days from people's projects. You can see that the plaster has fully settled to the bottom. There's clear water on top now. Okay, and so, and I'm back here um, bringing the, our bucket that we just mixed to settle over here. Um, and actually this, this is just for demo where these are settling right now. This is our power outlet. Do not leave your bucket to settle on this table right by the power. This is purely for the demo. Um, so, um, okay, so we now have this bucket and you can see the water has, has truly settled and this one as well. So I'm gonna pour these both off. I have a spatula. So this is what you'll do when you come in on your next batch. So you'll take it and that's how if you wanna do a detail here. So we have one, and you'll notice as I slowly pour, it gets cloudy. So as opposed to pouring that water into the drain, I'm pouring it into this larger collection bucket. Right? But then now there's the sludge that's at the bottom. So then now this is you'll take it, this, and I'll take the sludgy sludge, and this. You really want to try to get this off. And the goal is once you're kind of at a point where your your bucket is too um, it's too full of plaster, um, or you're done with your project, you want to scrape this back to zero. So I'm not going to do that whole process right now. But you're going to take basically a rubber spatula or a plastic spatula in these and just some about 10, five minutes of elbow grease when you're done with your project. You do not need to do this every time with this when you're done. And this is this is somebody who has been doing pasta for about a week uh, straight. A bunch of little mixes and batches and clean up. Um, but you wanna get it. And in this process, you'll end up taking fresh water. You'll take it here and then just a little bit at a time and you'll pour it in there. Does that make sense? Um, okay, and then what, what we'll do is as the sludge evaporates, so this, this is like a collective bucket, these are collective buckets, the water further will settle, and then about once a week, myself or our studio tech, uh, who in this case is Stella, but if you're watching this at another school, it'll be a studio tech will then pour that off into, into the drain, just the clear water, and then the le little bit of sludge will from there you go there, and then that sludge will end up going to um, the larger receptacle. So just one more time with the process. So this is settled as I move it. It's cloudy. I pour that. 
but there's very little solids in that cloudy one. And then I take that and this this has some plaster that actually did set in here. Um, and so this one doesn't have quite as smooth a bottom, um, but we have some brushes. Old toothbrushes are awesome for this kind of thing um, to get you cleaned up. So, um, so okay, so we're going to pause this video so they don't need you to clean it fully. Um, and we're going to show you a couple of things not to do. So this is a what? What? What did you say? Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. So we're heading back into the sink. You can see one of our students there working. So here's an example of some what not to do. Um, so never ever pour plaster down the sink, A. Uh, but B, what these examples are, this is, uh, this is basically someone who's left in this one, who's left plaster to solidify in essentially a brand new $2 um, mixing bucket. What happens is that this can risk, when you do try to get it out, it can risk this cracking. Um, these will last, I, if I'm working on a plaster, I can get these to last for 50 batches of plaster if you watch it, if you wash it carefully after each time. Um, and the number one issue with with uh, folks who are not comfortable with plaster, they let the plaster solidify fully in there, what's not used, as opposed to having a piece of bubble wrap or some little side project that they have where they can just add extra plaster to. Don't let your plaster solidify in here, get it out. The problem with this one is that people put like that unused, that plaster that was setting up inside this bucket. If you have plaster that's at the very end, that's in here, don't pour it in your, in your cleaning bucket put that onto either that like bubble wrap experiment or put it onto just a piece of cardboard that you're not going to use. Um, and then you're going to throw out because now this solid that salt that solidified in there is now going to be a pain in the butt to put into the larger cleaning bucket. So it's just best practices and, and errors happen and don't be too hard on yourself if, if you do ruin a bucket or something like that. Um, but do do your very best to, to keep things safe and clean and the number and feel free to watch this video two or three times or each time you uh, you work in a in plaster before you get fully comfortable with it the number one thing maybe tell you can just show one of the signs is to never put plaster down the sink do not put plaster in any sink ever for your entire life okay uh, I gotta go to that camera. To... <laughs> so we forgot. Uh, we forgot our cleanup over here at the at the site of our pouring. So what I would recommend is first using a scraper and just scrape up any that you missed. Um, so you're just scraping it into a dust pan. And then just often what will happen on a tool is that you'll get um, you'll get a little plaster on a tool and you can use two tools. So in this case, I'm using a dustpan and you just scrape that up so you can see that my tool is now pretty clean. And then I'll just take it and put that directly into a trash can. Just make sure that my tools are all scraped clean and then I'm going to use a damp sponge to just clean your tool. You can also use, uh, don't use the sink for that. Um, and then again, here you can use this. And then for the table, it's very important to clean the table with the wet sponge um, after. And then this is what you're going to use. Um, and during COVID, uh, we have extra sponges, and so you can also use a dedicated sponge uh, for your project while you're doing it um, to keep your area clean and to keep your tools clean. 
And then I'm gonna take this, I'm not just gonna let this harden because a little bit of plaster residue will end up uh, shortening the lifespan of this, of this sponge. Uh, these sponges cost about a dollar. Um, and so what you'll do is you'll then take this in your, in your, in your rinse bucket and you'll rinse it out a few times. And then you can even take a, a smaller clean bucket uh, and just dip it in there and then squeeze it out one more time in, so, that it's, so that it stays clean. But you never use the same thing to rinse it But, but uh, if there's the, the teeniest bit of residue, um, so really what I like to do when I'm doing a plaster project, and honestly, when Chella and I have been recording these demos, we've always had two plaster rinsing things. But just the, the smallest amount of residue, we do have a trap um, in the sink uh, for, but it's something we really can't rely on or else the, the sink will clog up. So, but good, good kind of question. Okay. <laughs>